If you're a creative like me, you don't necessarily have the time or the talent to create everything you need. With Avado Elements, you can download unlimited creative assets all in one place. Where do you think I got a lot of the sound effects in this episode? Sign up for a low-cost annual plan today at everlyheights.tv slash Envato. That's E-N-V-A-T-O. Saw a broken clock on the sidewalk. The hands were moving backward. A theater kid's flashlight cast a shadow at my feet. An old actor told me once that time is on your side. But every time I try to run, this town pulls me back inside. This town has a gravity. Hasn't changed since you left. The lights dim and our play begins. Enjoy Hey, Marie Molecule. And stick around after the show for a little something extra. This town has a gravity that pulls you by your jeans. It's a half remembered feeling of some place you've always been. You can try to drive away, but the roads turn you around. It starts a ticking clock till the magnet pulls you back. Knock three times. Hey. Say her name. Hey. Science time will never be the same. There's a lady in Everly Heights who helps kids with their science questions. She's not hard to find. It's simple. You just go to the Franklin W. Dixon Memorial Library, walk to the back of the study area, head down into the basement, walk back to the science center, find the big door with a molecule painted on it, knock three times and say, Hey, hey Marie, Marie molecule. molecule. See, simple. Usually, I go to see Marie Molecule for silly questions like how does shampoo work or is my dad building a Terminator robot in the garage? But today, for once, my question was deadly serious and I needed an answer right away. Luckily, Marie Molecule is pretty chill, so it's, like, not a big deal. Hey, Marie Molecule! It's Eliza, your favorite kid in the whole wide world. Eliza! It's so good to see you. Come in, come in. Uh, thanks, Miss Molecule. Oh dear, what's wrong, Eliza? You sound so anxious. I'm worried about my brother Liam. What happened? Liam was riding his friend Christopher's dirt bike, and he didn't know how to ride a dirt bike, and he hit the brakes, and it freaking flipped over! Oh no, is he okay? He's home now, but when he was at the hospital, they took pictures of his bones! Oh, they gave him x-rays. X-rays are pretty cool, right? Are you nuts? They hit you with ray beams. Have you ever seen a Marvel movie? Liam's gonna get superpowers, and knowing him, he's gonna become a supervillain. Then Liam will get arrested, and my parents will be sad, and I'll never see that dumb butthead again. Sorry. I get anxious sometimes. You don't have to worry about your brother, Eliza. X-rays are pretty safe. 
So what are x-rays anyway? Liam said they shot him with a big gun. Oh, he's a little off pace. Usually. A butthead. So they shot stuff at him, but it won't hurt him. X-rays are a form of radiation, and they act like visible light in a lot of ways. The big difference is when light hits an object, like your brother's skin, it bounces off and travels back to our eye to allow us to see him. When x-rays hit your brother, it shoots right through him. Well, everything but his bones, anyway. Oh, no! Oh, don't worry. They just shoot right through him and leave an afterimage on a piece of film. Like a shadow? Yeah, kind of like a shadow. In fact, x-ray images were originally called shadowgrams. You're one smart cookie, Eliza. That's what my mom says. X-rays are so weird. How does somebody even invent something like that? Well, X-rays weren't invented, they were discovered and harnessed by humanity for the greater good. That sounds really impressive. It is. In 1895, a scientist named Wilhelm Röntgen noticed X-rays while he was experimenting with a different kind of ray. He was shooting cathode rays through a piece of glass to see what happened. Well, what happened? Well, nothing unusual at first, but then he noticed a glow around the spot where he'd been shooting his rays. Turns out, he discovered a whole new type of ray. Since he didn't know what they were, he just called them X-rays. X? Like a variable in math? Yes, exactly. To be solved later. You're good at math too, huh? Duh. So he never changed the name? No. People tried to name it after him, but he kept using x-rays. And they were considered a medical miracle at the time, since they allowed doctors to see injuries inside a person without having to slice them open. Exactly. Nobody wants to do that, unless they have to. Besides, that would, like, kill the person, which is sort of the opposite of what you want. Sometimes. But an x-ray is way safe. In fact, they're totally safe. So, you want me to believe x-rays are totally safe? Pretty safe, yeah. Then why did my brother's doctor leave the room when he shot the x-rays at him? That's pretty darn suspicious, if you ask me. Well, great point, Eliza. Very astute. Yeah, I get good grades and stuff. And humble, too. Your brother's doctor left the room because x-rays are technically a form of ionizing radiation. Oh, no! See? I told you Liam was going to hulk out. <sighs> Calm down, Eliza. I don't like you when you're angry. Sorry. And sorry for apologizing. My mom says I shouldn't do that. Our natural environment exposes us to ionizing radiation every day. And it doesn't really hurt us, at least not in any significant way. When you're a doctor, though, who gives people x-rays all the time, you get exposed to a lot more radiation than most people. So it's kind of like going out in the sun all day. If you went out for an hour, all you would have to do is wear sunscreen. But if you go to the beach for the day, you should make sure to sit under an umbrella once in a while for extra protection. Exactly. See? I told you I get good grades. So, Eliza, do you feel better about your brother now? Yeah! I mean, I won't be surprised if Liam still becomes a supervillain, but it's not gonna be because he got an x-ray. It's gonna be because he's just a jerk. And your anxiety is gone? I'm usually pretty anxious, but at least I'm not anxious about this anymore. Glad I could help. We'll be back with more science fun after a quick word from our sponsor. Don't worry, it's fake! From the depths of the dumpster, it's Junkbots. The only toy that starts as trash and ends up, well, still trash. But fun trash! 
build them, break them, or forget them under your bed for decades. Junkbots let cool kids like you embrace the cycle of consumerism. Why buy sustainable when you can buy sensationally disposable? Junkbots. Because nothing says fun like future landfill fodder. Batteries included. But they are probably leaking acid, so watch out! And now for more fun on Hey Marie Molecule. Hey, that's me! Hey, Marie Molecule. What's the deal with all these AI pictures and chatbots? My friends say robots are going to steal our brains and our hearts, like the Wicked Witch of the West. No brain stealing today, Eliza. Generative AI, Gen AI for short, isn't some mean old robot overlord. It's more like a giant pattern finder. Picture giving a robot a zillion crayons and a zillion coloring books. The robot doesn't really see what's in the pictures, but it notices patterns. Like, hey, cats usually have triangle ears, dogs usually have floppy ears. So when you ask it, draw me a cat superhero, the AI mixes all those patterns together and poof, you get a brand new drawing. So it's basically doing what people like me do? Studying, learning, then applying what it learns? Exactly! And large language models, or chatbots, work the same way. They read mountains of textbooks, articles, websites, then when you ask a question, they predict what words are most likely to come next. Like playing the world's biggest game of Mad Libs. So when I say, why did the chicken cross the road, it already knows I'm about to say to get to the other side. Pretty much. Okay, but if it starts writing me love poems or tries to date my calculator, I'm out. Fair enough. And it's funny you bring up calculators. Gen AI is basically a concept calculator. Did you know back when they first came up with computers, there was a job called calculator where a human would sit there and do a bunch of math? So why wouldn't they just use a calculator? Hey, wait a second! See? You caught it. What used to be a hard job that took people a lot of time doing math became something anybody can do just by pulling out their phone and loading an app. But all those poor calculator people were out of a job. Yes, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. The calculator just freed people up so they could find new ways to use their human ingenuity to help people. But I really like to draw. I don't want a computer to do it for me. And you don't have to. But for people who are looking to make their jobs easier, technology can really help. I know what a little artist you are, and if you don't want to use AI to make your art, you don't have to. But other artists will find it useful, and you shouldn't hate them for that. How would you feel if a painter told you you weren't allowed to use your digital drawing tablet to make your art? I'd be pretty miffed. As you should be. Nobody should tell artists how to art. That's what people did to people like Michelangelo, and I think we can both agree those people were wrong about him. Agreed! He's my favorite Ninja Turtle. Oh shoot! I better get home. Me and Liam are gonna do a Star Trek marathon. Ooh, I love Star Trek. Remember, if you have any other science questions, I'll be here, waiting to answer them. Yep. I just knock three times and say, Hey, Marie Molecule! Hey, Marie Molecule! She'll make it clear, she'll make it cool From the cosmos to tiny atoms If you need answers, she's sure to have them Knock, knock, knock! Say it loud! Hey, Marie Molecule! Glitter! Now, the curtain hasn't quite fallen yet. We'll pause to fill you in on another fantastic Everly Heights tale, and then I'll be back to step out from the wings and talk about the story you just heard. See you in a minute. So, do you want to be part of Everly Heights for real? Head over to everlyheights.tv and grab a membership on the Everly Heights Arts Board. You'll get cool perks like 
your name on the Arts Board Hall of Fame. Custom membership cards. Even letters and stickers from Mr. Matheson himself. All while helping me keep Everly Heights alive and growing. Become a patron, support the arts, and snag your spot in the story of Everly Heights at everlyheights.tv. Just look for the banner that says join the arts board. Well, I hope you enjoyed Hey Marie Molecule, a 90s edutainment show set in Everly Heights. Now, this show started as a team submission when I participated in Brian Ibbett's He of Coverville, his podcasting reality show, America's Next Top Podcaster. For a lot of the show, when it came time to write something, I would raise my hand because I'm a big writer, you know. And uh, so this was an example of a script I wrote. They kind of just let me... My team kind of just let me go off on my own and write the script that I low key set in Everly Heights because I was wrapping up, I think, my kids like us story from Everly Heights at the time. So my mind was very much in it. And honestly, to set it in Everly Heights properly didn't actually take all that much. I just had to put a little bit of a uh, little bit of voiceover from the Eliza character right at the beginning, just saying it's Franklin W. Dixon Memorial Library. For the record, the first half of the episode is our submission from that uh, reality podcast show. The second half is my attempt to do a Marie Molecule segment about generative AI using generative AI. Now, I know a lot of people have a lot of problems with Gen AI uh, these days, and I respect them. But as a professional creative for most of my career, they can do a lot of really amazing things. And I thought, you know, a science-based podcast was a really good opportunity to get in and play with it a little bit. I did train a local voice model on my teammate from America's Next Top Podcaster, September, to create her lines for that section. But for the Eliza character, who was originally voiced by my daughter, who is an artist herself and does not like generative AI, who did not want to participate, I went ahead and what I did is I took my voice model, because yeah, I have a voice model trained on myself. Then I took a bunch of samples from my voice model and I pitch shifted them up. And then I trained a new voice model on that. So while it sounds eerily like my genetic daughter, Eliza, it is actually my voice that you're hearing. <laughs> kind of weird, huh? I also thought that using AI voices to talk about AI would be pretty meta, which is kind of on brand for me. Now, as far as Everly Heights connections in this episode, it is kind of my love letter to the Mr. Wizards and the Beekmans of the world. By the way, I interviewed Beekman. Search for where I'm from, Paul Zaloom, if you want to see me interview Beekman. But the main connection to Everly Heights in this episode is the Science Study Center in the basement of Franklin W. Dixon Memorial Library, which we learned about in Louis Loop's episode last week. It's named after the pen name they published the Hardy Boys books under. Here at the end, I'd like to turn it to you. What are your thoughts on using generative AI in creative projects like this one? Also, did you have a teacher like Marie Molecule you could go to with big questions? Shoot an email or an audio voicemail to Bill Meeks at everlyheights.tv and we'll share them in a future episode. Well, that about does it for this episode. Thanks again so much for joining me for this edition of Everly Heights Tales. We'll be back next week with a brand new story. And just remember, you can always leave the town, but odds are the magnet is gonna pull you back. Have a good night. This town has a gravity that pulls you by your jeans. It's a half-remembered feeling of some place you've always been. You can try to drive away, but the roads turn you around. Cause every exit starts a ticking clock till the magnet pulls you back. Mm -hmm.